So I don't know if you guys saw this, but Gordon Chan just went on Fox News like yesterday and the title of it is China is mobilizing its citizens for war expert warns. So Gordon Chan, if you guys know, if you are in this space, you probably know who Gordon Chan is. Um, he wrote a book called The Coming War with China or something like this. And he's long been predicting a war with China. That's kind of his stick. He goes on these news channels and uh, says there's a war coming. He promotes his book. This is what he does. And most people in the China space that are actually watching don't really give him that much credit. But the problem is like when he goes on Fox News and it says expert warns, they present him as an expert because he wrote a book and he has connections in China. The average viewer who doesn't know a lot about China uh, will assume he's an expert and say, oh my God, China's preparing for war. And so I wanna go through this video real quick because it's really, it's pretty ridiculous to be honest. So obviously they introduce him and say, this is Gordon Chen and he's, you know, an expert on China. And then he goes into this speech talking about how President Xi is telling the people to prepare for war with the United States and that China is preparing and mobilizing for a war with the United States without giving any context, obviously, just basically saying China's starting this war. They're getting ready to attack the United States. So let's go ahead and watch a little bit of this. All right, Gordon, what is the significance of the this direct channel challenge from Xi Jinping? Xi Jinping and his foreign minister, Qin Gong, are building a case for war. They're trying to justify a strike on the United States. So he's saying they're trying to justify a strike on the United States, which is a little bit obviously pointed. It's not really uh, looking at the case of what's actually happening. I mean, the United States, they have generals saying that we're going to be at war with China by 2025. They're talking about arming Taiwan with missiles and more defensive capability, trying to make it a prickly target. And they're opening up new bases or reopening bases in the Philippines. They're talking to Japan and saying like, hey, you need to kind of go away from your pacifism and start building up your military again because there's going to be a war with China. And so all these actions have been taking place for the last couple of years. And it's really been like hyper, like uh, emphasized, I guess, in the last year, especially since what happened with Europe in the Ukraine conflict, the Ukraine war. Um, so they've really been saying, oh, Taiwan is next, Taiwan is next, Taiwan is next. We're going to have a war with China. And so all these police, like all these pieces need to be in place before we go to war with China. And so if China all of a sudden says, well, our enemy is singling that they're going to attack us. And they say that we're enemies, then we should probably prepare for that. Like that's not a unrealistic response from any government. Like if if you're about to be attacked by a bully and the bully says, I'm going to come to your house in maybe two years to beat you up. You're not just going to be like, well, I guess I'll just wait until he gets here. No, you're going to start lifting weights. <laughs> you're going to start, you know, learning how to fight because you need to be prepared for when that bully shows up. You aren't just going to sit there and wait for it to happen. So Gordon Jen is basically saying, oh, China is preparing for war against the United States without actually talking about what's been going on and why China might feel the need to increase its military. So let's let's continue to see what else he says. James Lilly, our great ambassador to Beijing in the 1980s and 1990s, put it best when he said, the Chinese always telegraph their punches. Well, Xi Jinping is telegraphing his punch. So he's saying Xi Jinping is telegraphing his punch, but hasn't the United States for the last two to three years been telegraphing their punch? So, I mean, logically, would you just wait until you get punched? Or would you start to learn some, you know, self-defense? <laughs> would you start to be like, all right, if I know I'm going to be punched, maybe let's make my punch more impactful so that my bully or this other country decides mm, maybe it's not worth it, right? This whole deterrent, so to say, right? They're, that's what they're talking about in Taiwan. They're like, oh, we want to make Taiwan this prickly deterrent that China won't try and expand outwards and, and take Taiwan. But as soon as China starts to maybe manufacture more weapons or put more mil military budget 
into their military, right? That was the big thing that they're talking about now. It's like 7.6% or seven over 7% 7 that is going to be allocated, like an increase of 7% into the military budget of China. And it's like, well, yeah, it's still a lot less than the United States. But at the same time, it's like, well, yeah, if there's a war coming, you should probably start preparing for it. And if your enemy is saying our biggest threat, their national security threat um, just dropped a couple days ago, too. And it said China is the biggest threat to the United States. So if you're China, if you're Beijing, you're going to say like, well, they're broadcasting, they're signaling their actions. So we should respond to what they're saying they're going to do. And as soon as they respond, oh, they're the bad guys. Oh, oh I can't believe they're building up their military. So let's keep watching and seeing what else he says, because it's pretty ridiculous. It's only like four minutes, but he says a lot in this four minutes. How important is the military in China at the moment? It's getting more and more power over the political system. And we see this, you know, at the National People's Congress, which is now go ongoing, they announced a 7.2% increase in the Chinese military budget. We don't know what exactly it'll be, but it's certainly greater than GDP growth for this year. Just go back to last year. They announced a 7.1% increase for 2022. They actually had GDP growth of reported 3.0%, but a lot of economists and analysts think it was actually negative. That shows you the Chinese military is getting so much power in the system. Yeah. And that means the Chinese military are now thinking about what they can do, not what they should do. Right, so now he's saying the Chinese military is gaining more power, they're getting a bigger budget, and they're thinking about what they can do, not what they should do. And I mean, what they can do is defend their country i mean what, what I, i'm not even sure what this means again this is not putting it into context of the united states having the largest military budget in the world so like china's not even matching its adversary so if we look at this as like a competition china's not like ramping up going full production on military stuff it's like we're increasing our budget we have a bigger budget we have more uh risks clearly because of countries saying that <laughs> that were their biggest threat. So we have more risks. And again, I'm not trying to like defend China, but the problem with this and what I see with this is this type of media is, you know, this has only been up for like a day and already has 200,000 views. You know, Fox News is a major news outlet. And although people will say, oh, well, Gordon Chen sees a hack and, you know, he's been predicting this for years and, you know, Fox News, oh, who cares about Fox News? People watch that. And it's oftentimes people who aren't well versed in the actual geopolitics of uh, Taiwan in China in the United States or any of these issues. So they just hear that China is preparing for war and then they say, oh, that's real bad. And they buy into that narrative of China's the aggressor in this situation. And again, it takes two to tango. But at the same time, I would if you look at what's actually happening, you would say both parties need to step back and say, hey, let's not be so aggressive towards each other because this isn't going to end well. Then they go in talking about business and uh, should American businesses actually be in China and uh, the interviewer who was on Fox News. Um, and he's saying that, that seems a little extreme. At least he's pushing back here and saying, look, like American businesses in China, that's important. Like, should we really be pulling out? And of course, Gordon Jen is saying, well, if we're going to go to war with them, then we shouldn't have any businesses in there. Again, pushing this concept or this idea of war. Vivek Ramaswamy, who's running for the presidency, on this program says, look, we've really got to, not exactly stick it to the China, but we've got to say American businesses should not be doing business in China. Look, I find that rather extreme. How about you? Well, it is extreme if you're talking about peacetime, but if you think you're going to war and the Chinese think they are, then it's not extreme because it is strategically and morally wrong to give your enemy, and the Chinese do call us an enemy, Stu, mm -hmm. to give the enemy the means in order to develop their military, which is configured to fight America. So, no, it's, it's not extreme, not at this time when we are on the precipice of the Third World War. And the one thing that he says is the Chinese think they're going to war. And it's like, well, why do they have that thought? Like, why do they think that? And it's like, well, if you look at all the headlines and all the actions taken by the United States, the only logical conclusion after looking at all these statements and all these generals and all these 
you know, all these headlines and all this rhetoric coming out of Washington, then the only thing that you could think is like, well, I guess we're probably going to go to war because one side is saying that we're going to go to war. And so we're probably going to like, it's not that hard. I mean, if, if somebody's yelling at you, I'm going to come punch you in your face. And you're like, no, nah, no, nah, he's not going to do it. Like, why would he do it? But he keeps saying, I'm going to punch you in your face. I'm going to punch you in your face. I'm going to kick you when you're down. I'm going to stop you from, you know, doing things. Then you might start, well, okay, I mean, maybe, I guess. I mean, he's saying it. You're not just going to ignore what is being said. So it's pretty, pretty wild. I mean, that is incredibly disruptive. Sure. Uh, and so is the death of hundreds of millions of Americans. Yeah, but they've not got there yet, have they? Right. And then he says, and so is the death of hundreds of millions of Americans. Hundreds of millions of Americans is the entire American population, right? What he's literally saying is there's like 370 million U.S. citizens. And he's saying hundreds of millions of Americans. So what is he talking about? One third, two thirds, three thirds, like, like the whole population, right? What is he, what is he, what is he getting at? Because hundreds of millions, if there's only 300 million, how many hundreds of millions is he talking about, right? This is very disingenuous in what he's saying because it sounds like there's going to be massive deaths and there's going to be this major war. And it's just like, well, why are you even on here saying this? And I get it. He, you know, he gets paid to go on here. Obviously, I get that. And then he also can sell his book. I get that. But I mean, like, what is the impact of this? And that's what's like, I don't think that these people are looking at this long term or even uh, beyond the headline or the click, because there are a lot of people who will watch this and then get certain ideas that we're going to World War Three. I mean, that's literally what this guy who is an expert, according to them, is saying. He says one more crazy thing. Look, Stu, the Chinese, uh, the Chinese political system is now mobilizing China's civilians for war. In July, an entrepreneur told me that in China, he, he's making medical products for the civilian sector. Um, he told me that Communist Party cadres went to him and demanded that he convert his production lines to make items for the Chinese military. The Communist Party has given that order to many Chinese factory owners. And in fact, the Communist Party is now operating a lot of factories that once were privately owned because the owners did not want to stick around for what they thought was Xi Jinping's war. That's how close we are. It's ominous, Gordon. And thank you very much for being with us. Appreciate it, sir. Thank you. So then he goes on to talk about this. The Chinese government is mobilizing the citizens for war. And his argument is, I have an entrepreneur buddy who's in China doesn't give the name, doesn't say what type of thing he's manufacturing. I mean, this argument is, trust me, bro, I know people. And I could say that too. I'd be like, ah, oh, I was talking to my friend who was an entrepreneur and he said that China doesn't plan on going to war. So I, I have Chinese friends, so trust me, bro. That's literally his argument, but they bring him on here as an expert and people will be like, oh wow, he knows people in China. And these entrepreneurs are saying that their factories are being taken over by the Chinese government and being retooled or are, are being forced to make military equipment. And that may be true, right? That may be true because I don't know. But the idea that you're putting this out there without any, any real facts other than my buddy told me um, is pretty wild because we're not talking about like, you know, he's not like saying buy this stock because my buddy said that it's going to be a new breakthrough and, you know, it's like some random financial advice. He's talking about like a world war. He's saying World War Three is about to happen because my buddy, who's an entrepreneur, had his factory um, taken over by the government. Uh, I mean, these are really wild statements. And I think that we have to be aware of what is happening in the media and what is being pushed. Because again, if People don't push back on this narrative, which is clearly the narrative is we're going to war. If we don't push back and we don't say no, logic needs to prevail. What is the value of going to war at this point for either nation? And what is the benefits or what is the cost of going to war with these two nations? Like we really need to have that conversation. We really need some level heads to come in and say, no, this doesn't make any sense. And so therefore it needs to stop. So I think when you guys see these kind of videos, uh, try to uh, push back on it, I guess, if you can, if you have friends who are maybe in the United States or if you have Chinese friends, actually talk to them and say, hey, what's actually going on? Try to get a better sense of what's going on and what people are thinking about. Because 
at the end of the day, these experts are going to keep going on to sell books and to push a certain narrative. And if we just accept that narrative, then it will lead to, well, conflict. And that's what I think, that's why I want to make this video, because I want to say, like, look, let's really look at his argument. He's not actually saying anything other than, trust me, bro, this is happening. And it's getting hundreds of thousands of views, and it's going to continue to get hundreds of thousands of views. And that's just on YouTube. That was probably broadcasted on television. Obviously, it's a television show, so who knows how many people tuned in when it actually was broadcast. So we're talking about hundreds of thousands, millions of people seeing this type of content. And this video that I'm putting out trying to, you know, talk about it and say, hey, let's be more reasonable, we'll probably get 10,000 views. So I think we need like a lot more people trying to combat this in some way, because the alternative is we do listen to these experts and we do end up in a conflict, which would be really unfortunate for everyone involved. So now it's just this little quick video. I mean, it turned into a much longer video, but uh, this is just a little video off the top of my head. Hope you guys like it. Uh, stay tuned for more stuff because I do have uh, some more videos that I'm working on. Uh, currently, I actually have a script I'm about to film this other video uh, about the Taiwan situation. So be sure to subscribe if you want to see that video coming up soon. And uh, if you want to see something else, I have some other videos here.